Claude, key research methods of the early Russian photography works of art. Good afternoon, colleagues. First of all, I would like to thank uh, our colleagues uh, from uh, the Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts uh, for the great uh, exhibition and uh, the present uh, conference uh, that uh, gathered uh, us all together to discuss all of our concerns uh, and uh, findings. Uh, and uh, today I would like to share our findings. Uh, and uh, I used this uh, photo as an epigraph uh, for my presentation. We call it uh, homage to Talbot, and that is a print uh, done in uh, 2010 uh, by American photographer Alan Green. It is uh, done in, in one of the alternative technologies uh, from paper, but that is color type, but color type of 2010, as I have mentioned. So why I use it? Because uh, these kind of things uh, sometimes uh, have uh, a lot of uh, difficulties uh, and uh, discrepancies uh, in, in them. Of course, if we took a real print, uh, we would not doubt uh, the date of its uh, creation, but uh, the further down we go to the past, the more questions uh, turn up, and in my presentation I would voice some of these questions. Interest uh, to early photographer turned up in Russia in the recent decades uh, has been reflected in a whole wave of historic uh, studies, researches, and exhibitions, uh, and uh, added uh, to re understanding of uh, early photography heritage in museum collections. And uh, part of these multifaceted activities of specialists is attribution, because uh, further study of uh, photography evolution currently is impossible without uh, the multifaceted uh, study of uh, these uh, memorials. And uh, we use a traditional art historian analysis methods uh, and uh, a lot of uh, technological studies. But in every specific case, uh, bearing in mind uh, certain characteristics of uh, photography as a separate part of art, the set of methods uh, can differ. Today, cooperation with uh, retouch artists, physicists, chemists uh, that have a whole array of scientific and technical means allow us uh, to tackle a lot of tasks connected with attribution, dating, and uh, preservation condition of uh, an exhibit. And uh, we cannot but admit that uh, all these methods are additional. The primary method for a keeper is visual inspection of uh, the exhibit. <coughs> stylistic features of photography that uh, includes, uh, apart from uh, traditional visual means like uh, composition of uh, a photo, tone, nuances, and uh, virages, uh, and other characteristics uh, like uh, retouch, uh, enable us uh, to narrow down the date and determine the name of the photographer. As an example, I can give you several samples uh, of uh, famous uh, masters of uh, their times uh, that uh, have their individual manner, like uh, Vanninger, Levitsky, Bergner, Austrian photo artist Vanninger, who started uh, actively practicing negative and positive processes uh, in 1847, created uh, his uh, prints and paper, borrowing the main techniques of work from daguerreotype. And he strived to repeat not only the composition of a print, but also tried to get closer to the tones of daguerreotypes. However, the level of technology development of those times did not enable the photographers to get perfect in terms of depth uh, and uh, sharpness uh, prints. That's why they were forced to use a retouch uh, or full illumination of uh, the prints. The manner of uh, working on several details uh, can give us a certain ground uh, 
for our assumptions about uh, offers. But this ground is not that stable because uh, currently we do not have enough knowledge in this uh, area to use these signs uh, as uh, individual signs uh, and standalone signs for attribution. I would like to illustrate uh, what I have mentioned uh, using the portrait of Arnoldi from the State uh, Pushkin Museum. And uh, there are two inscriptions on the reverse side. One says that the portrait uh, was uh, made in 1846, and the second uh, witnesses that it was made in Plushar photo studio five years later. And uh, historical evidence shows that Fyodor Plushar launched uh, his uh, photo studio in uh, December in 1853, and uh, photo studio of his brother, Evgeny Plushar, turned up in Pavlovsk in 1855 only. So that makes us doubt uh, the owner's dating. And as for the author of uh, this portrait, uh, we believe that uh, stylistically it is closer to Vanenger's uh, work of the late 1840s, but we need to seriously study stylistic and technical particularities of uh, the works created uh, by the Plushar brothers uh, to state it all definitely. It is worth mentioning that the 1840s uh, and first half of the, the 1850s were the time of uh, photographic uh, technologies development when every photographer photographer acted as a researcher and uh, by a method of uh, trials and errors, uh, they were improving uh, their discoveries uh, and uh, stabilization of uh, images uh, in uh, solutions of uh, potassium bromide, uh, chloride, or iodide uh, gave uh, a chance uh, to have uh, prints of different uh, shades. And here we can see the examples of all of that. And uh, important factors influencing the nature of a photo or was the type of paper and uh, Right, charge. For example, sepia shades were characteristic for the majority of uh, Prince of Levitsky in the 1850s. And uh, Bergner's uh, portrait artist, uh, for example, was uh, characteristic uh, with uh, blue and gray tones. But again, there can be clear contradictions uh, because uh, Levitsky can uh, have works uh, with uh, cold uh, gray tone as well. And Levitsky was one of the photographers who experimented with technologies a lot and uh, responded to interesting developments uh, that turned up in European and home markets. And he introduced the most promising ones into his practice. And the novelties that uh, at first uh, seemed uh, successful with the time might uh, have had negative impact uh, on the imprint. And uh, that was not uh, Levitsky's only issue. That's why when we assess uh, every print, we need to clearly understand all the aspects of the technological process of those times. And uh, we need to understand uh, why uh, this or that uh, print uh, was preserved uh, the way it was. And all these elements of uh, art research should together enable us uh, to carry out a uh, fully fledged work on uh, attribution and dating of the memorial. And now I would like to speak about uh, the subject method as uh, one of the most uh, resultative in studying works uh, created by professional portraitists in studios. In the first two decades of uh, photography, the industry of uh, mass uh, furniture production and accessories for photo studio has not uh, been uh, developed yet and uh, that enables us uh, to name the author of uh, the uh, photo with a uh, high level of likelihood uh, for example uh, we can understand uh, that uh, for example Vanenger's and Levitsky's Levitsky used uh, very lavish uh, decoration of their studios uh, for different compositions. And when we study their works, uh, we can see the whole sets uh, of uh, furniture 
and refurbishment that belong to different photo studios. And they can be seen both in early prints and in images on metal plates. And it can be explained by the fact that photo artists started as daguerreotypists. And when negative positive processes developed, they introduce paper into their photography practice. And study of the creative heritage of masters with the help of subject method enables us to expand the evidence base. And hundreds of photographs have been studied recently that used to be thought of being created by other authors. And uh, when we study anonymous uh, works, uh, we can uh, change uh, the idea that uh, was uh, fixed uh, about uh, the creativity of uh, this or that uh, master. And studying the history of photography in the modern understanding cannot be built uh, only on the priority of uh, written sources. Still, no matter how important uh, theoretical ideas uh, might seem to us without specific practical examples that uh, show the methods of uh, memorial studies uh, and uh, continuity and uh, effectiveness of application of each of them, uh, we would not be able to get an idea on the importance and uh, the need of this work. Let us consider two, that is Levitsky's work again, so let us consider two interesting images. That is Portrait of Sivers uh, from uh, the Pushkin State Museum collections and uh, unknown person portraits from the Hermitage collections. According to the inscriptions on the prints, uh, they were done uh, by Steinmuller. And we believe that stylistically they are close to Veninger's works and the presence of uh, the refurbishment of Austrian photo artists, uh, the armchair and the small table intensifies uh, our assumptions. And uh, what also can prove uh, Veninger's authorship uh, is uh, the preservation level of these works and uh, some characteristic uh, details of uh, the print's uh, color that can be seen uh, in dated uh, and signed uh, photographs. And uh, we believe that Steinmuller worked as a retouch artist and maybe a second photographer in uh, this photo studio. And that is why we cannot find uh, anything mentioned about his professional activities in the publication of those times. Whereas uh, sources uh, definitely show that uh, he uh, bought the photo studio from Veninger only in the early summer 1858. Another example of attribution studies is a portrait of an old horser from uh, Hermitage collections dated the late 19th century. And uh, this uh, image is close. Uh, to card de visite format, uh, and it includes passport of uh, light beige uh, color, and uh, we can see the print Levitsky in uh, the bottom right uh, corner. But there are a lot of contradictions here. It is obvious that the printer was made on gelatin paper in the late 19th, so maybe early 20th century, and uh, the print on passport too uh, clearly states that, and it was was used very often by Lev Levitsky, son of the outstanding Russian photographer Sergei Levitsky, when he became the only fully fledged owner of the celebrated photo studio. And uh, obviously, that is when the print was made. But it had been printed, obviously, from the negative that was made 40 years before that by his father. Multiannual study of the creative work of the photographer proves that. And here is the original.
by the photographer Levitsky. So looking through the card of visit of Levitsky's work of that period, we can see the neutral background and the board floor as well as other signs of his photo studio. And uh, thanks to the subject uh, method, uh, we also uh, managed uh, to see a larger set of uh, the photographer's uh, works uh, with yet another portrait of an old uh, poster created by Sergei uh, Levitsky himself. And uh, the name of this poster was uh, stated it was uh, General Vasilchikov and uh, our assumptions were proven by yet another photographic portrait from the Hermitage collections that was uh, founded uh, late, that was found later on and it is to the right on its reverse uh, we can see that uh, it is General Vasilchikov uh, that is present in the photo and further study of the matter proved uh, that they were created during one session of posing in May June 1858 when Vasilchikov who was part of the committee on St Isaac's Cathedral construction came to Petersburg uh, on its uh, celebrated uh, ceremony and uh, he went uh, to uh, Levitsky's uh, photo studio at that time and the story of Vasilchikov's portrait in the late 19th century was clear it uh, was most likely to be made uh, on the wish of uh, the general's uh, family but these uh, cases are very rare very often those who would like to get a copy from the negative did not think about copyright and just addressed the photographers whom they liked and they printed their name on uh, the images and apart from that uh, there is a, a huge layer of counterfeit production that is usually of a low quality and uh, has uh, no names and uh, that is yet another important aspect of attribution studies that need serious work so the next uh, example demonstrates one of the biggest erroneous uh, judgments so the confidence to ownership uh, legends uh, i think uh, all of us know that uh, going uh, looking through family albums we um, find uh, uh, photographs without any date or any details on the time uh, or date uh, uh, of filming and the event uh, why uh, the photographs were taken. So trying to reproduce all the circumstances in memory, uh, we quite often lose the accuracy. And quite often, uh, like ears of family archives, uh, tend to interpret uh, uh, the events uh, which happened uh, many years ago at their discretion. Uh, a vivid example uh, of uh, works from the State Hermitage Collection are exhibits from uh, the collection from Bobrinsky Counts. So these works were preserved by the Count for many years, and he added some uh, detailed legends, which are not always accurate. For instance, on the photographs uh, where uh, Duke uh, Trubeskoy and Gagarin are depicted, apart from mentioning the names, uh, there is uh, the date, uh, 1850, and also the uh, uh, Printed uh, text uh, saying it was uh, from the photo studio of Spakovsky. However, the date is erroneous due to a number of uh, reasons. Uh, first of uh, all, well, it has to do with the biographical date of the young people. And also, the St. Petersburg uh, photographer Spakovsky opened his studio only in 1951. And the last point uh, is that there are some technical features. So, uh, the photograph is printed on albumin um, paper, 
and uh, from a collodion negative, uh, which could be proved by uh, Molson leakage uh, at the right uh, bottom angle of the print. So the date uh, specified by the owner uh, is not correct. So these examples just demonstrate uh, uh, that every photograph can contain a lot of important and controversial information. So the analysis based on attribution couldn't be uh, considered as the only possible uh, method for identification. So only the combination of artistic, historical and uh, uh, technical methods of review um, could allow us uh, to reveal the full scope of data on the project. Uh, so, um, so uh, typical and atypical uh, attributes of uh, the work uh, sh should be studied. Uh, only in that case you can uh, uh, combine all data on the specific uh, author, his methods of work, uh, from the point of view of statistics and possession of technologies. So, uh, as a result, it's possible to get a more uh, objective, unbiased uh, picture of how photography was developed. So, and uh, the further steps in that direction are impossible without uh, uh, realizing how important the comprehensive analysis of monuments uh, is. For that, we need to involve a wide range of specialists. Thank you so very much for your attention.